Hi everyone and welcome back to another BTLO replay video. Be sure to follow us on X, LinkedIn or join the Discord server to keep in touch with the BTLO community. Links are in the description below. In this video, we'll be going through the Browser Bruises Lab, which is a medium digital forensics lab. Uh, what we're going to do is take a look at the details first. Now, the only tool for this lab is uh, Dumpzilla. So I've already opened up the documentation, which is available on dumpzilla.org. And we'll take a look at the scenario text. All the personally identified information from givemepii.org was breached and the logs show SQL injection attempts. We were able to get our hands on a suspect's laptop. As a forensic analyst, it is up to you to find out if he is telling the truth, but it's just browsers. Let's take a look at question one. So what is the value of the cookie with the name starting with her? So the first thing I want to do is work out how we actually use Dumpzilla. Um, we do have some example commands down here. Um, and I did see something up here. So we need to know where the directory is that contains uh, the Firefox information for the tool to actually analyze. So we can see here, obviously we're on a Ubuntu box. So we care about the Unix path, which is home dot Mozilla Firefox, blah, 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 dot default. So what we'll do is we'll open up a terminal. We are going to go to dot Mozilla. And we can see we've got Firefox folder in here. So we'll go into that. And we've got these two ones here. So we've got the this one here, which is for us, right? Which is the, the Firefox for the for the lab user. So we know it's not going to be this. Uh, and the only other one we have here is this one here. So we'll keep this open so I can remember what the name of this folder is. Uh, we're going to open up a new terminal. Uh, we want to get Dumpzilla, which is here on the desktop. So we just need to right click and extract this here. And then we are going to go into that. So desktop, Dumpzilla master. And we can see in here we've got the Dumpzilla Python script. So we'll clear this. We're going to do Python 3 because we saw Python 3 being used here in the example commands. Uh, so we'll do Python 3, dumpzilla.py. Uh, and then we need to provide a path to that file. So this one here. So it's going to be slash home ubuntu dot mozilla firefox n8 e 3hn 2y dot default release. And now if we run this, let's see what happens. We'll run this. Uh, we can get rid of this. We don't need that anymore. Oh, I didn't mean to close that one though. That's fine. We can just jump quickly back into here uh, and just run that command again. So we can see it's given us a summary here of all the different information it's pulled out. Um, so I guess let's see. So question one is asking about the value of the cookie with the name starting per. Uh, so all we can do is go to the docs, control F for cookie. Uh, and let's see what we have. So we see here, here's a syntax, right? So this is what we've been doing. We've been filling out the browser uh, profile directory, which is that folder we found the dot default release and we can pass in options and when we have one of the options here is cookies uh, so it's probably going to be in here so we'll do dash dash cookies we've got 158 uh, I don't really want to go through all of these so what we'll do is we know the cookie name begins with per um, we can see the name is here so this this second property and we're looking for the value so we want the property below it so what we can do is run this command again. We're going to pipe it to grep to search for the string pre, which we get from the question. Uh, and then we want to do, so we don't want just that line because it's just going to give us the name and we're interested in the value. So we're going to do dash capital A for after, and we're going to put one. So it's going to grab the line that has pre in it and then one line afterwards. So if we run this, uh, well, it was it pre? Per, per, there we go. First mistake of the video. We want to do per, not pre. 
dash A1. There we go. So we can see we have the name, personalization ID, and there's the value that we need to enter. Uh, but just to explain that a bit better, if we do three lines after, we can see it will just print the three lines after the match. So very, very useful. Uh, now, I know the clipboard in this lab is busted, so I am going to have to type this out manually. Um, so let's just do that quickly. Uh, 4wg equals equals. There we go. Perfect. So question two, when was the GitHub repository payload box slash SQL injection payload list last visited? Um, so let's have a look on here for history. So we've got another option here for history. Um, we can do URL. So uh, let's just do let's just do history uh, and see what we get back first. So I'm going to clear the screen. Let's go get rid of cookies and put history instead. Uh, and then we know based on the question we're looking for this string. So what we can actually do. Uh, so SQL injection payload lists, uh, we can pipe this to grep as well. So grep SQL injection, not infection, injection payload list. Uh, cool. This So we, we have the same issue before, right, where we're searching on the title and the URL, but we want the last access, which is above it. Uh, so what we can do is rather than doing uh, dash A for after is we can do dash B for before and we'll just do one. Uh, and now we've got the last access date. So it should be this. So 202105271647043. Question three, what is the most searched keyword in the search bar? So let's clear this and we're going to go back to just running without any options so we can see that overview again here uh, so we have search engines we have forms we have history those are going to be the three things we want to look into so let's do search engines first uh, oh, not that let's go back uh, let's just try search Okay, so this is just telling us what search engines have been used. So that's not useful to us. Uh, default release, let's just go back. Uh, we have forms, let's take a look at forms. Uh, search bar history, okay. Uh, and the question is asking us for the keyword and number of times, so the most, the most search keywords. So we can see here we have times used, uh, times used three. That is the highest. So where is it gone? So the value is uh, uh, SQL map, SQL map. So SQL map, comma three. Okay, the next question, what is the user's most visited domain name? Uh, this is definitely going to be history. <clears throat> so we'll clear this and we'll do dash dash history. Now we need to work out the most visited domain name, uh, which is going to be the URL. Uh, let's have a look at the docs, see if there's anything we can do quicker. Uh, frequency, most visited sites first. So that's probably going to be the best, right? So if we do our command, but then do dash frequency. Uh, okay, this doesn't, it's not actually telling us. Oh, okay, frequency. One. Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Two, uh, three. Okay, so... Uh, Facebook.com is two, Google is three, so maybe Google.com. Yeah, nice. Uh, what domains have saved passwords? I did see something. If we clear the screen, and we're going to go back to just running the the default commands, so we get the overview again. Uh, we see here passwords. So let's try dash dash passwords. Okay, we've got two, we've got Shodan IO and we've got VonWeb and it does ask us to give the domains in alphabetical order, domain only, no subdomain. So in alphabetical order, it's going to be Shodan IO and VonWeb.com. And then the final question, there's a SPT flag. Can you find it? Now, I have a pretty good feeling. So we know that running the command without any options like this gives us all of the output. So what we could probably do is just try and grep for SPT. Uh, it's a little bit dirty, but if it helps us find the flag, so we'll do uh, grep 
and then the format is literally SBT uh, and then something in brackets. If we do SBT, uh, we can see here, title, SBT, check downloads. Um, and if we want to see where that actually is, what we can do is just run the same. We're going to do um, before, so dash B, five lines, dash A, five lines. Uh, and we can see that it's a... It's a Google search and it's the it's the uh, web page title. So I'm not sure how they've done that, but here is the flag. Um, this is in this is in history. So what we need to do is just enter in SBT spiky bracket. I don't know what it's called. Check down loads underscore two. And there we go, we finished the lab. So it's worth mentioning that although this lab released as a medium, uh, it has been rated by the community as easy. And I honestly think I would agree. Um, it is quite a straightforward lab. I mean, it's just a case of looking at the docs, running the commands and maybe doing a couple couple uses of grip. Um, nothing too intense. Uh, the last question, I'm not a big fan of having flags. I feel like everything else in here is, is quite nice um, and it gets you using different parts of the tool. Whereas the flag, you know, all we had to do was grip for it there's no guidance on where it is, so it's not like we had a path to go and find it anyway. Um, but apart from that, it's a good, nice, quick, uh, easy lab, good fun, a tool I haven't used before, so I've learned something new. Thanks, guys, for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the BTLO channel to catch all of our replay videos, and I'll see you in the next video.